All right, in this video, we're gonna address the concept of balancing redox reactions. We're gonna see this is different than regular reactions because of the one thing involved with redox reactions that we must take into consideration. Those are the electrons get, get transferred from one element compound to another element or compound. And so we have to keep that track of that as we balance our redox reactions. So I'm gonna use an example here and what we're going to do is we are going to balance a redox reaction first in an acidic solution. Okay, And so if we think of acidic solution, what is present in excess, what's around us and available in an acidic solution, we have H plus ions and we're going to have water. Right? It's going to be dissolved in water. That's our solvent. So we're going to look at the reaction where we have solid copper reacting with the permanganate ion and that's going to yield copper 2 plus and manganese 2 plus okay so right now i'm i put in our physical states as we're going to go through and finish balancing this uh, i'm just going to simply just write it out without the physical states but note we would keep the track of that to, and address it at the end okay so here I have my overall, right, we call this our skeleton reaction, which means what's reacting with what, but it's not necessarily balanced. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna break it up into the two half reactions, okay? What we wanna do is we're gonna look at well, what's possibly changing uh, in our reaction. So if we go and we look at the oxidation number for copper, excuse me, is zero for neutral copper, it goes ahead and it forms copper 2 plus, which has an oxidation number of plus 2. Well, we see as a reactant and as a product, we don't have oxygen. So that gives us a hint that oxygen is probably not being reduced or oxidized. Well, we go ahead and we look at manganese, and we see manganese here, if we were to calculate the oxidation number, would be plus 7. And manganese plus 2 would have a plus 2 uh, oxidation number. So we see copper is going from 0 to plus 2. So it's losing electrons, right? It's being oxidized. And manganese is going from plus seven to plus two. It's decreasing in its charge, which means it's gaining electrons, it's being reduced. So now I'm gonna break that into the two half reactions. Okay, so I'm gonna first look at my oxidation half reaction. Well, we say co copper is being oxidized. So we're gonna have copper yielding copper two plus, okay? And we see well, now what we want to do is we first want to balance for every uh, um, atom other than hydrogen and oxygen. Well, the only thing here is copper, and we have our ch number of coppers balanced. Next, what we want to do is we want to balance the charge by adding in electrons to make it have the same charge. This is plus uh, zero charge. This is plus two. It would give away two electrons, or if we put those two electrons there, that gives us a charge of negative two plus plus two, gives us zero, and so our overall uh, half reaction is balanced now for the charge and by mass. Now the other half reaction that we want to look at is our reduction half reaction. Well we saw that manganese is being reduced going from MnO4- minus to Mn2+. Plus. Okay. So first step we want to balance anything other than uh, oxygen or hydrogen that's in our reaction. That would be the element manganese, which is already balanced. We got one of each. Then what we're going to do is we're going to balance our oxygens by adding water. Oxygen's in our water. It's dissolved in solution. It's in an aqueous solution. So we can say, well, we have four oxygens here. What we can do is we can add four H2O and we add that water to balance our oxygens. Okay, so we can add water to balance our oxygens. Well, now we've created a problem of that we've added in our hydrogens here. Well, we can go ahead and balance our hydrogens since we said we're in an acidic solution. We have H plus ions floating around. Well, we have eight hydrogens here. We can go ahead and balance by adding in eight hydrogen ions there. Okay, so now we've balanced by mass. Same number of uh, atoms of each element. Eight hydrogens, one manganese, one manganese, eight hydrogens, four oxygens, four oxygens. The final thing that we need to do is balance for charge by adding in our electrons like we did with our oxidation half reaction. So we look and we see the total charge here for our reactants 
is going to be 8 times plus 1 plus our negative 1 for our manganese and so we see it is plus 7. Okay, we go over to our product side, we see we would have plus 2 plus 4 times the charge of our water is neutral is 0, so now this is plus 2. Well, the only way we can change the charge is by adding in electrons, which are negative. Okay, well, if we have a plus 7 charge here, this is plus 2. We need to bring this down to plus 2. And what we can do is we can add in 5 electrons. So now we've added in our 5 electrons. So if we bring this in over here, we see now that we have 5 times negative 1 for each of our electrons into this. And now that becomes plus 2 as well. So now we balance for charge and mass, right? Number of elements of each, um, atoms of each element. Now the final thing that we want to do is we want to combine these back together. Well, we look here and we see we have two electrons being produced here, consuming five electrons here in our reduction half reaction. Well, we don't want to make it that if I just add these two reactions back together, we're going to have a net effect of consuming three electrons for every mole of our reaction. We can't just have electrons being produced or consumed or, and left over in our reaction. So we need to make it so that however many reaction, electrons we have as a reactant in our reduction reaction is equal to however many electrons we have being produced in our oxidation reaction. Well, we have two and five. Okay, so what we can do is we can multiply our oxidation reaction by five, right, the whole thing. Okay, and so when we do that, we're going to see that we would get 5 copper goes to 5 copper 2 plus, plus now we would have 10 electrons. Okay, We can do a similar thing by saying we're going to multiply this whole reaction by 2, Okay, and that's going to give us a total of 10 electrons. So now we see what we have here are our 10 electrons plus our 16 H plus plus our two permanganate ions and that yields two manganese two plus and our eight water molecules. Okay well now we have ten electrons here, ten electrons there, so now we can go ahead and add up our two half reactions to give us our overall reaction. Okay and our overall reaction would be where we get rid of those ten electrons. So that ends up being 5 copper plus 16 H plus plus R2 permanganate and that yields our 5 copper 2 plus plus R2 manganese 2 plus and our 8 water molecules. Okay, so now we see as we have to balance our redox reactions, we really have to take into consideration the fact that we have these electrons being transferred. We've got to have the correct number being produced and consumed, where we saw that the lowest common multiple here was 10, and that gave us our overall balanced equation. So we notice as we went from our skeleton equation to our overall balanced equation, we added in some hydrogen ions, we added in some water molecules that weren't there before, and as well we noticed that we would not reduce these, right? Well, we have five copper here, five copper here, and just make them one. Those are taken in consideration that transfer of electrons.